staring out. Teachers asked him, Malachi, are you okay? Malachi was just not there. Malachi's teacher had gone to perform her dismissal duty, so he was left out with the teachers who were on recess duty. 10 minutes go by. Malachi is still standing, staring blankly into time and space. Malachi, she's just staring, staring. Mia and Malachi Jackson, the name rings from the Rocky. Malachi, Maya, it's time to go. Your parents are here, run. Malachi and his sisters, Mia, took off toward the doors leading to their classroom. Mia is in second grade, Ma uh, Malachi is in kindergarten. Just like that, they're gone. Everyone else is out there playing and they're gone for the day, or so you think. Want to know what Malachi was doing? Well, you're about to find out. About eight minutes go by. I, to the teachers here in the walkie, please send Malachi to the lobby. His ride is here. The teachers on duty, they look at one another. Malachi, Malachi, we sent Malachi in 10 minutes ago. What do you mean? Suddenly, the younger of the two jumps up with a start. He must be eating the cupcake. She runs toward the kindergarten door. She bangs on the door. Malachi has locked himself in the classroom, guys. So she runs to her classroom door. Thankfully, he didn't shut her classroom door. She runs to her classroom door, makes her way to the bathroom that separates the two classrooms. There's Malachi, hunched over. Green frosting oozes from his wet mouth. Malachi, he turns. <gasps> Malachi, I'm sorry, teacher. I'm sorry, teacher. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. Malachi, you know better. Now go to the lobby. The teacher makes sure that this time she walks him towards the lobby door so she can see that he is following direction. She says, your ride is here. It is time to go. Green frosting, he now has a green frosting mustache and a little bit of a beard as well. There's green frosting under his hand. Naturally, his teacher was informed and we're all not too sure what happened to Malachi that night, but he came to school with, let me see if I can share my screen. He came to school with this and a little note on the inside. And this is the evidence of what he shouldn't have been doing. We're all not too sure what happened to Malachi that night, but he has been on his best behavior ever since. The Bible states in Proverbs 22, verse six, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The point of this story is that you all must listen to instruction from your elders. You might not like it at the time, but trust and believe they're doing it for your good. The end. Oh, thank you. I see someone clapping. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. Yeah. Great story. Yeah. I was on the edge of my seat, Ms. Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I kind of know what probably happened to him. Oh, yeah, I think so too. That's why you train up a child in the way they should go. <laughs> so <laughs> I was going to do a cahoot, but I didn't have time. But I do have a couple of questions I'm going to ask the young adults here. What was sure. the color of the frosting? Can anyone Green. tell? <laughs> Green. 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 And what kind of dessert was it? A cupcake. A cupcake. A cupcake. And who was our main character in the story? Malachi. Malachi. 
Should you guys be like Malachi? No. No. no, please don't be like Malachi because I have a, hel- a headache right now from Malachi. Okay, don't be like Malachi. <laughs> okay, listen to your parents. Now, would anyone like to close out our chosen story with prayer? Oh, don't all answer at once. I vote Braylon. I think Braylon should pray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. We'll bow. Oh, I do. Come on, Braylon. I think you're muted. We can't hear you. Your earbuds are plugged in. You have to unplug them. Oh, there we go. Hi. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us have another day. Um, forgive our sins. Let us be saved. Thank you for letting us hear that story. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brayla. Great, great prayer, too. Uh, Miss Virtue, when are you coming back to give us another one? Whatever Mrs. White tells me, because she gave me a month to plan for this one, so it was, it was great. Ah, okay, okay. And how's your dog doing? She's doing good. I literally, she's over here. Oh, man, I thought she was going to show it to us. I'll get her, I'll get her. Shoot, uh, okay. right. the dog was terrorizing Virtue earlier. It was hilarious. <laughs> Really, really. Yeah, and he's a little um, guy. She yeah, is. she's there he he's is. super sassy. Oh, look here. Yes. Ah. I wonder where he got that from. Uh, Miss Harris, for sure. She's spoiled. <laughs> Say hi to the children, Bella. Train up a dog in the way he should go. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good one, Miss Jan. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed, indeed, indeed. Well, we're gonna we're gonna end it right here. Uh, Any questions or anybody have any type of um, any any anything they'd like to say before we end our kids' corner tonight? Uh, Maybe a testimony. No crickets. That's all I'm hearing is crickets. Uh, I'm thankful for the Sabbath. Yes, thank you, thank you. I am thankful for the Sabbath as well. Who thankful said that? Thankful for life. Oh, it was me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you, Braylon. Thank you for life. Amen. I'm Amen. thankful for my mom and dad providing everything they need for me. Oh. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Yep, that's great. It, it takes great parents, man. I tell you, in this world. Anybody else have, Me, have a, I'm thankful a little for shelter. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Yep, to have somewhere you can go every, every night home and be safe. That's for sure. All right, all right. Anyone else before we shut it down? Yes, all I'm right. thankful for the children's story. Ah, yes, yes, the yes. Story. yes. Yes, indeed, Sister Flu Ellen. All right. All right. Well, all right, guys. We're thankful for Miss Charity and her children's story, as Sister Flew Ellen has said. And we thank we look forward to you coming back, uh, Virtue. You know, uh, so Sister White, you're gonna uh, you know, Charity, you're gonna have to, you know, get her back on here. She's a she's a regular that so it's definitely. it's it's a done it's a done deal. Me and Charity, all in favor say aye, aye. <laughs> okay, it passes. This is good. <laughs> Absolute. Thank you, Charity. Don't leave me hanging. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to, you know, to start our um, adult lesson at three minutes. Good evening, everyone. It is so good to see you. Welcome, welcome to adult Sabbath school via Zoom. For those who don't know me, I am Elder Barry Brooks of the Southeast Seventh-day Adventist Church. 
It is so good to see you all out tonight. We have made it through another week, and it is so good that we made it through. God has been good to all of us. Even through adversity, God has been faithful, and I hope you have been as faithful to him. And uh, tonight, we are going to get started in a few minutes. Um, and what we're going, you know, we have a wonderful, wonderful pastor. Uh, I see some of the faces on here, uh, some of the folks on here, rather, who have been uh, uh, been around Southeast for a long time, who who know the gentleman who is preaching or teaching. I'm sorry, did I say preaching? That must have been something come out of my mouth here. Um, uh, he's He's been teaching uh, for over 50 years. We are so glad to have him. And the key is to this gentleman is that he is our first official pastor of the Southeast Seventh-day Adventist Church, King Solomon Smallwood. Pastor Smallwood, how are you? I am doing just fine. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. It's so good to have you here. I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, just to go ahead and open us up with uh, prayer, and then I'm going to have a couple of announcements. I got a, a, a nice little surprise for everyone, and then, then we're going to get right back to you, sir. So let's do prayer. We are praying. Loving Father and our God, we thank you for the blessings of another week. We thank you for keeping us safe. We thank you for providing our needs. And we thank you now for the privilege that we have to come together to study your word. We pray that the Holy Spirit will make things clear and plain. And Father, give us faith that we will let your word sink into our hearts and minds, guide and direct us so that we can all live lives that will honor and glorify you, and in the end, be saved in your soon coming kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, we're gonna get started. I have a few announcements for you. And, and then I have Sister Flu Ellen, who's gonna do a poem for us. So, um, but I, I just want a couple of announcements. Uh, I see my friend uh, Cecily Bryant is online with us tonight. We are so glad to have you. Um, and please keep Cecily in prayer as she lost her brother, uh, Paul. And uh, just keep her in prayer, give her strength and, you know, give her a call from time to time. Let her know that, that you still love her as you have. And, and Southeast showed her a lot of love. So continue to do so. Also, uh, we will have a blood drive. Uh, the blood drive is coming. Um, I'm hoping that uh, uh, my friend is on, Sister, um, oh my goodness. Uh, Veronica. Got, uh, yeah, Veronica. Sister Veronica, where you at? Let's right do here. this, let's do this, Veronica. Okay, <laughs> good night and happy Sabbath. Well, next week is our blood drive and I'm still looking for donors. I just want to remind everybody who is, um, going to be a donor to just drink a lot of fluids and get a good night rest and i'll see you next week amen all right thank you sister veronica appreciate you appreciate you and last but not least uh we are still we still if you did we still have a few uh sabbath school lessons left if you are one to if you, you are one to get a sabbath school lesson and you did not please see me tomorrow at church or feel free to give me a call or touch base with um, uh, Sister Battle. Uh, you know, make sure you touch base with one of us and we'll make sure that you get your Sabbath school lesson. Uh, we thank you so much again for coming out uh, tonight and, and uh, sharing the gospel with us. And I really want to say one thing before we get started. Uh, just please, please, you know, the holidays are coming up. And these are rough times for people and just share the gospel with someone. And if you want to give me their email, uh, let me know, you know, give me an email. If you say, Hey, you know what? Send this person an email uh, to let them know about the Bible study, you know, hopefully that they can come on, let me know. And I'll put them on our list and they'll, they'll get something every week. 
It's about saving. It's about saving souls, saving lives. And uh, let's invite people in to learn about Jesus. All right. At this time, I'm going to ask Sister Fluellen, uh, can you, you know, to do a poem for us. Sister Fluellen, can you hear me? Yes. Am I on? Am I Yes, unmuted? you are. We can hear you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You are. All right. Happy all right, happy Sabbath, everyone. And occasionally I have uh, written items, and hopefully this will glorify God. And the title is News from Heaven, and it's addressed to my people on planet Earth. And it says, my ears are open. I'm listening to hear from you today. My eyes are over all the earth. Today, my blessings of love, mercy, and grace went out to trillions, beyond, people beyond number, not even counting. My offer of salvation is still open to whosoever. Regarding the enemy, Satan is angry. You are his tiger, target. The fight is on. The battle is raging. Get out your whole armor. You will have to fight. Be strong in the Lord. So put on your helmet, salvation. Always take your shield. That's faith. Don't forget your sharp, two-edged sword. That's my spirit and the word. And your belt of truth and breastplate of righteousness. And be strong, but don't worry. Stay cool. I am the victor. Everything is in my hands. I am God. There's no one like me. I have weapons, visible and invisible. The battle is already won before it begins. I am your creator. I am your God. There is none like me. Before you go out, stay prayed up. Watch as well as pray. My protection will cover you. Call me. I'm listening, and I will hear. Be alert. I know your circumstances, your conditions, everything. I am God. You are mine forever. Nothing can separate you from my love. You are the apple of my eye. Jesus, my son, pay the price for you. Be encouraged. I'll be with you through trials, tribulations, and the valley of the shadow of death. I won't ever leave or forsake you. I keep my promises. Know this. I'll be back soon. I will set up my kingdom. Be ready. My love is forever. Your soon coming king. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, and very timely as well. And we all know we're looking, you know, after what we see in this world, if we are, we need those words of encouragement and what we should do. And I thank you so much uh, for bringing that uh, spoken word to us tonight. All right. Um, I want to tell you, tell you, I'm sorry, did I hear somebody? Okay. Um, just want to let just want to tell you about our teacher tonight. Uh, he is an awesome man. When I asked him, when I caught up with him, and I asked him to uh, uh, teach our Sabbath school class, he was so excited, man. You could hear him; he's smiling, man. He, he's like, "Man, yes, I want to do it." Just excitement in his voice. I was like, "Yeah, I want to do it. Come back to my home church. I'm loving it. Not a problem." So uh, let me tell you about Elder King Smallwood. Mm -hmm. Uh, he began his ministry as an assistant pastor of one of the Berean churches in Atlanta and the Berean church in Atlanta, Georgia, and he pastored other churches in South Georgia. Evangelism has been his first love throughout his ministry. In 1974, he accepted a call to the Allegheny West Conference to establish a new church on the east side of Cleveland. In 1975, after baptizing over 100 souls in a tent crusade, he was voted pastor of the year. I heard about that. I heard about that. In 1978, he led the congregation in the completion of the new Southeast Seventh-day Adventist Church. In 1979, he was elected executive secretary of the Allegheny West Conference and served as personal ministry, inner city, AY Adventist Youth Society and Pathfinder Director. In 1983, he returned to the South Atlantic Conference and served as the Associate Pastor of the Berean Church as the Administrator of Finance. 
He later pastored churches in North and South Carolina. He retired in June 2006. You retired, man? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> he continues to accept invitations for preaching appointments. He and his wife have six children and five grandchildren. Gardening is his hobby. He loves God and his family. Let's welcome Elder King, uh, Sm King Smallwood here back here home, his very first church here at Southeast. We are so glad, so glad to have you back, sir. And it's just, a, I, again, I heard your excitement when I talked to you. And man, I, I still heard, I heard it last week too. So I am so glad to have you here, sir. How, how have you been doing? I have been doing just fine. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So tell us a little bit about a little bit more of what you're doing and as far I know you retired, but you know, from everything I know about you, you have been busy. You know, you've been doing you haven't retired that much. Yes, well, I am a real estate agent. That is a ministry for me. There are many people that are unable to pay the market price for their rent. And there are many individuals that have problems paying rent. So as a real estate investor and manager, those that I come in contact with, they find a different kind of manager in the real estate business. So I do that as, as a sideline to keep me busy as I continue in my ministry. Hey, man. Well, that's awesome. I know you run across a lot of people you've helped and uh, you've done a lot through God's uh, God's uh, hands that you have just left a wonderful impression and hope, you know, and save souls. And that is that's what it's all about. So, you know, uh, again, you haven't lost your touch. You know, you know exactly what you got to do and how to do it. So we thank you for coming on. And uh, as we go, there's just a few rules, everyone. Uh, please, for those who are on the, on the cameras or Zoom, please raise your hand uh, so that when, you know, that we can uh, acknowledge you when you have a question or a comment. And then also for those who are on the phones, we're gonna stop from time to time in case you have a, if you have a question or a comment, because we know you can't raise your hands for us to see. So, um, Pastor, I'm going to go ahead and throw it on, throw the ball to you. We thank you so much for flying up here from Atlanta and, you know, sharing time with us. <laughs> so go ahead, sir. It's all yours. It looks like you're, you're muted, sir. Okay, once go. again. Thank you very, very much, Brother Brooks. And the pleasure is mine to be able to share with the Southeast Church family. I like to say to everyone that memories of you at Southeast are some of my most cherished memories in my ministry. So tonight, it is a pleasure to be able to share with you in this wonderful Sabbath School lesson. And as we get into it, feel free to ask a question at any time. Feel free to make whatever comment you would like to make. Now into our lesson study for the evening. The Everlasting Covenant. The Everlasting Covenant. The memory text says, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Now we wanna keep this in our mind, everlasting covenant. It says here in the beginning of our lesson, talking about the third angel, angel message, Revelation 14, six, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Now, the author says, notice the everlasting gospel. 
everlasting as in always existing, as in having always been there, as in having been promised to us in Christ Jesus before time began. In other words, as we are talking about the everlasting covenant, in reality, we are talking about a covenant that preceded the existence of our earth. Now, throughout the Bible, we find the word everlasting covenant. We find it in the Old Testament, and we find it in the New Testament. Why? Because the essence, the essence of the gospel is covenant, and the essence of covenant is the gospel. Now, with all these wonderful scholars at Southeast, I wonder if someone can comment on that statement. The essence of the gospel is the covenant, and the essence of the covenant is the gospel. Can someone comment on that for us? Break it down and let us know what it's talking about. Who would like to do it? I see some familiar names, and I have heard some familiar names. Ah, we have uh, Hans, um, Hans Michelle. Hey, Doc, go right ahead. Hey, Bar Barry, how's it going? Doing fine, sir. How about yourself? Good. Not too bad. Good evening, Elder King. Uh, the everlasting covenant is the everlasting gospel, and that's because the gospel is the good news of, of, uh, of our salvation from sin, and that comes through the covenant that we enter in with Christ. Um, I think we mentioned this uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was doing Sabbath school, and that the covenant is everlasting because that's, uh, that's a deal that God and Jesus made before we were, before we came into existence. God said, should man fall, we'll have a backup plan to save them. And that's the good news of the gospel. So that's why they, they, they're they sort of one and one. Uh, they, they, they go together hand in hand. They're one and the same. Very, very good. And thank you very, very much. Now, as we, you know, anyone else? All right, if not, as we study our lesson, we find that God, who initiated the covenant, gave it to man, and he was looking or he was expecting only one response from man and that one response that God expects from man or from us is simply love. He says he wants us to love him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul and with all of our strength. How is how is this love to be expressed? It is to be expressed by obeying the word of God or in keeping his commandments. This is our response to God's love in the covenant relationship. Now, as we move on into Sunday's lesson, the covenant and the gospel. <clears throat> We find from the very beginning, the central truth of the covenant was the gospel. As our brother just mentioned, the gospel is salvation by faith alone through Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. Salvation by faith alone through Jesus Christ. Now, in our world today, I'm sure many of us are very familiar with the misunderstanding of many concerning the Old Testament. There are those who say that in the Old Testament time, the people lived under a covenant of works for salvation. And they say, uh, those of us that are living in the New Testament time, we are living under a covenant of grace. But as students of the Bible, when we understand what happened in the Old Testament time and what is happening in New Testament time, we find that God has always had one covenant and that covenant was a covenant of grace that was extended to all men. 
As a matter of fact, the Bible says in the time of Noah, it says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So in the Old Testament, there was as much grace then as there is in the New Testament. As a matter of fact, I'd like for someone to read for us Romans chapter 3 and verse 22. Romans chapter 3 and verse 22. And brother narrator, you can choose anyone who raises their hand to read this for us. Romans chapter 3, verse number two, 22. All right, anyone got it? Romans chapter three, verse 22. I have it. Go ahead, please. Okay. It says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is, is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. I'm sorry, that was verse 21. Verse 22 says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, until all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Thank you very, very much. The Bible makes it plain. The righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, it is unto all and it is upon all that believe. And the Bible says there is no difference. So it matters not if people live in Old Testament time or in New Testament time, we are all saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. To make it plain, in the Old Testament time, the individuals expressed their faith in Christ as their Lord and Savior through the sacrificial system. As they offered their sacrifices, they were saying, we believe in a coming Savior. In the New Testament time in which we are living, we express our faith in a Savior who has come, and we do this by participating in the communion service. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, the Bible says, as often as we eat the bread and drink of the cup, we do show the Lord's death Till he comes. So as Paul makes it plain in Romans chapter 3, verse 22, there is no difference when it comes to salvation, whether we whether we lived in Old Testament time or in New Testament time, we are all saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Now, as we look at the promise made to Abraham, God told him that he was going to make of his seed a great nation. And because of that great nation, God told, informed Abraham that his seed would be a strangers in a foreign land for approximately 400 years. But he promised them that after 400 years, they would come out with great substance. Now, I'd like to ask a question here. When it comes to Abraham, how was the gospel revealed in that covenant promise? When it came to, when we come to Abraham, how was the gospel revealed in that covenant promise? Who would like to comment on that for us? Based on Genesis 15, verse 6, and Romans chapter four, verse number three. Who would like to come in on that for us tonight? Uh, we have Art, uh, our head deacon, uh, uh, Pastor Smallwood. Go ahead, Art. Okay. The Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham obeyed God giving, willing to give up his son on the altar to kill him, which is a type of Christ's death and God offering up Christ for us that so we can be saved. Abraham was a man of faith. Even though he did not see what God promised him with a naked eye, he believed in what God said and he obeyed God. 
very, very good. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That is the gospel. And as we study the Bible, we find that nowhere do we find that Abraham obeyed God and earned his righteousness. And as students of the Bible, we know that no place in the Bible does Jesus tell us to do good or obey in order to be made righteous. Over and over again, the Bible says, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. A few references added to the one that we already had, have Genesis 15, 6, Romans 4, 3, Galatians 3, 6. Salvation by faith, that is the gospel. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And as the songwriter says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So salvation or the gospel is salvation through Jesus Christ by faith. And as you will see, man's part in the covenant, our part in the covenant relationship with God has always been obedience. Obedience to God's word, which contain the law. And as one of our brothers pointed out earlier, Abraham, who believed in God, had faith in God. When God asked him to offer his son as a sacrifice, his love for God was so great. His faith in God was so strong that he was willing to offer his son if this is what God wanted him to do. In Jeremiah, as a matter of fact, in our Sabbath school lesson on page 32, the last paragraph in the lesson says, even Jeremiah talks about the new covenant. He does so in the context of the law, quoting, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those, after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. So as we study the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament, when it comes to God's covenant, obedience is the response that God wants from man in every covenant throughout the whole Bible. <clears throat> Understand the covenant promises that God made to Abraham, they were made to all Jew and Gentile who are of faith in the everlasting covenant. I'd like for someone, if you will, to read Galatians chapter three, verses six through nine. And we will see that when God made the promise to Abraham, he made it to all. And we're going to let the host choose someone to read for us Galatians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. Anyone has it? Yeah. It's oh, okay. Um, hang on, Art. Let's try somebody else just for a second. Um, anybody else? I, I have Raise it. Okay. Uh, I was trying to get somebody new. Hang on. Hey, Miss Nicole. Okay. Oh, Miss Nicole, go right ahead. Your you your uh your mic is off, so you're gonna have to unmute. Miss Nicole, I saw your hand up. Okay. Uh, oh, there you go. Are you, is it, yep, okay. All right. Um, I didn't raise Jen, my hand. Jen, oh, oh, you didn't raise I your hand? Uh, no, I didn't. I raised I my hand. I uh, Barry. Uh -oh. Okay, this time we're going to go with uh, Sister Fluella and then Sister Parker. We'll get you next time. And Jan. Okay, we're, we're looking at Galatians 3, 6 through 9. Is that it? That is it. Correct. 
All right. Verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which are which be of the faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Thank you very, very much. So the promise that God made to Abraham, it was made to the whole world. Jew and Gentile, all who is willing to accept by faith the promise of salvation through Jesus Christ. And this is in harmony with John 3.16, a text that we all know by memory. For God so loved the world, everybody, that he gave his only begotten Amen. son, that whosoever, anybody, who is willing to believe by faith can have the same promise that God made to Abraham and to all of us throughout the whole world. <laughs> now let's hey, take a look at, beg your pardon? Okay, uh, let's a take a look question. at, yeah. yes. Got a quick question. Can yeah. you be obedient and can you be just obedient and still be saved? I have friends who are of other faiths and, and the way they look at it, as long as I obey what God wants me to do, you know, and I try, you know, I try to do all the things he wants me to do and follow the Ten Commandments that, um, that you know, I, I can still go to heaven. What, what's your thoughts on that, sir? Well, it's a good thing that people are willing to obey the Bible, but no man is able to earn his salvation by their good works. The only way that anybody can be saved is by Jesus Christ, because the Bible makes it plain in Romans 3, 23, we have all sinned, and the only way we can be made righteous is through Jesus Christ. Uh, no matter how good we are, we can't do enough good to undo the bad things that we have done. So uh, as the children used to sing the song, so high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get around it. There's only one way to the pearly gates, and that is through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's why he came and died. So that would be my answer to those who think that uh, just obeying will do it. We can't obey enough to be saved. We can't be good enough to be saved. We can't give enough to be saved, no matter how much money we have. We can't give enough to be saved. The only way we can be saved is accept Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, when we obey, it's not something that we do just arbitrarily. We obey God because it is a love response coming from us. As one preacher said, the apple tree doesn't produce apples to be an apple tree. It produces apples because it is an apple tree. So as Christians, we obey the Ten Commandment law of God not to be saved, but because we are saved, we obey it to express our love to God for all that he has done for us. Amen. Okay. Hey, Pastor, we have two hands up. We have two hands sure. up before we go any further. I, I, have, uh, I have, I think, Art, you were first, and then after that, um, hang on, Sister Wellen. Uh, Art was first, okay. and then Hans, Mitchell, uh, Michelle, I'm sorry, Hans, Michelle, uh, go ahead. The scripture Art. you just quoted, John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. People will use that scripture when you're witnessing to them and say, I believe Christ, so I'm all right, I'm saved. But then I usually tell them, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you believe in God, you do well. The devils also believe and tremble. Right. In other words, there's more to it than just believing. You have Amen. to obey. You have to 
hold on to Christ's hand. You have to come out from among them and be separate. People, especially sinners that call themselves saved, like to use that scripture and say, I am doing well. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. There's nothing wrong with me because I believe God. Okay. Very All good right, comment. Uh, Very good Dr. comment. Mm -hmm. All right. Dr. Hans. Thank you, Barry. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I was going to say this earlier, but then I, I didn't. But now that you asked the question, I'll, I'll throw this in there uh, quickly. Uh, as you mentioned, Pastor Smallwood, one of the requirements or the first requirement of uh, the covenant is obedience. So you can't have, you can't be a part of the, the, the covenant with God without obeying. Uh, and that, that's absolutely true. But I think sometimes we overlook the fact that it's not the primary requirement. That's more of a secondary requirement because we can obey, just like you said, but our works in obeying are not enough to save us. Uh, and so the primary requirement of the covenant is surrender. I see, I hear the word, it hits me on the inside and I surrender myself to Christ and I turn over to him. I allow him to turn me around to the inside. And as you said, because we love him, the love response is that I don't want to do those things I know that are going to hurt you anymore. So just wanted to throw that in there. Very good, very good. And I appreciate those comments and they are timely. The first brother that spoke about the person that said, I believe in God. And as he mentioned, the devil believes, but he just trembles. And that refer, and that is found in the book of James, the second chapter. And it also says we can have faith in God and believe, but faith without works is dead. And actually, it is talking about the good, the works of obedience and letting our light shine before the world. Uh, but it is done out of love, like the apple tree produces apples because it is apple, because it is an apple tree. We obey, as the brother just mentioned, because we love God. We do this good works because we love God, not to be saved, because our works will not save us. We can't do enough work to be saved. Okay, we appreciate all of those ones for comments. I, I, no. Elder, I, I, hate to buy. I have one. Got one I have more. one. Got I was one thinking. more. Sister, Wonderful. Sister Blue Ellen, hang on. Sister yes, Blue Ellen, I, was then we have of the rich, I, I was thinking of the rich young ruler when he approached Christ and asked, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And yes. Jesus said, well, keep these commandments. He said, I've done that. But then when Jesus told him to go a step further, take your riches and sell them and give to the poor. That was the love factor right there. He was not willing to do that. He loved his right. riches more than he was willing. So therefore, you can go through the motion. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. But what is your motive behind what you're doing? Are you doing it because you know it's the right thing to do? Or are you humble and saying, Lord, I don't want to do this. Can you help me? Help my condition, Lord, and help me. And realize that we all need him to help us to be where he wants us to be. So, yeah, I agree that some people go through the motions, but sometimes their heart is not into what they, so we, the Lord he looks at the heart, so he knows, you know. Beautiful comment, beautiful comment. Right. Okay. Uh, we can legally, right. we can legally obey the law as Sister Flew Ellen brought out and, uh, you know, say, so, oh, I'm, keeping the law and go to church every Sabbath. Uh, but it must be out of a heart of love. And if we love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, then when it comes to loving our fellow man, it won't be a problem. Because the Bible says in 1 John, I believe it is, how can we say we love God if we don't love our fellow man? So if we are keeping the law legally, but don't have a love in our heart for everybody, we are missing the mark. Very good comment. All right, anybody else right. before we move on? Yeah, All yeah right. one more, Dr. Payne. Dr. Sure. Payne. Yeah, so when the Bible says that whosoever believes in him, it's talking about whosoever believes in his name. 
and accepts him as Lord and Savior, not just an intellectual assent, but to accept him as Lord and Savior. And when you yes. do that, you get a new nature. Yes. You get a new heart. The Holy Spirit indwells you and enables you to obedience. Very good. Very good. Well, uh, we have two more hands, but I'm going to ask you guys, uh, Raul and, and Mike, uh, can you hang on just a few? Let's move on our lesson a little bit further. Just hold your questions or comments just for a few minutes. Uh, 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 Elder, K, uh, Elder Smallwood, go right ahead. Okay, we're going to look at Monday's lesson, the covenant and Israel. And as we all know, it wasn't because of their righteousness. It wasn't because of their unrighteousness or uh, uh, because of anything they had done that God gave them the land of Canaan to possess. And this goes back to what we were saying earlier. We can't work enough to save ourselves. So when the children of Israel were given the land of Canaan to possess it, it wasn't because of anything they had done. It was because of the covenant relationship that God had made with their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not only that, but based on the covenant that God made with the father, that is the reason God delivered them from the Egyptian bondage. Because in Egypt, they didn't have the privilege to serve God and worship him and obey him. But it was based on God's grace and love for them and based on that covenant promise that God delivered them. But notice, after God had delivered the, uh, the Israelites from Egypt, where did they go? They went to Sinai. And I like to ask a question. What happened at Mount Sinai? Anyone? They are out of Egyptian bondage. God has kept his promise. And now they are at Mount Sinai. What happened at Mount Sinai? Great. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, Mike. Did you still want to make your comment, sir? You're, you're OK? All right. Let me know when you want. OK. Thanks, Mike. Raul, how about you? Ruel, I'm saying Ruel, I apologize. Hey, yes, um, I just wanted to kind of reiterate um, some of the thoughts they were talking about um, when we're questioned with uh, people who think that they, they are good because they believe in, in, in God or, or that they, you know, they follow the, they follow the law and so, you know, everything's, everything's good. But uh, like uh, you said, Pastor uh, Smallwood, about if you're following the, the laws, but don't have love, right? And then, you know, as the Bible says, it's, we are like clanging symbols. But, you know, I, I thought about it and I said to myself that, you know, when we talk, when we talk about the law of God, we're really talking about, um, we're talking about the character of God. Yes. And it all boils down to it all boils down to love. Love itself is really the law and it's um, the root from which everything else springs from, right? So, and Jesus said, he said, um, the greatest commandment is, commandment is this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. So love really you know and I, I don't know i think i mean i'm always looking for the best way to explain things you know to people and you know it's the way we have when we uh, need to have an answer for our faith we're able to share in a clear way that really communicates the whole of the truth and um perhaps what we should be leaning towards is is explaining to people that the law, the, the law that we should be following is the law of love. And because we love, we, we do certain things. Because we love God, yeah. we carry ourselves a certain way. We don't do certain things. Um, we, 
do things that make him happy because we love um, our fellow man. We we um, we treat him in certain ways and we don't do certain things. We don't live our lives for ourselves in ways that could cause our brother to, to, to stumble. Everything that we do stems from that. Very good, very good. All right. Now we're gonna, uh, Pastor, hang on. We're gonna move on to what Pastor was talking about, about at what happened at Mount Sinai. So let's, let's uh, now we're gonna move on to that part. Uh, Sister Parker, I saw your hand go up first and then your husband after that. Yes, what, ha what happened at Mount Sinai, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Okay. Right, very good. The children of Israel had been in Egypt for more than 400 years, and now they were out. Uh, in bondage, there were so many things they had forgotten because they weren't able to practice the things that they once knew. So as soon as they got out of Egyptian bondage, God mm. officially established his covenant with the Israel. Now, the covenant, as we mentioned, had always been a covenant of grace. God was willing to forgive all of their past sins. And whenever we sin, God was willing to forgive. But in this love relationship and in this covenant, God made it plain that his law was very important. And as the brother just mentioned, Actually, the Ten Commandment law of God is actually a law of love. The first four commandments, as we know, tell us how to love God. And if we love him, we don't want anything before him. If we love him, we won't take his name in vain. If we love him, we won't make images and worship them instead of him. And we will remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy to praise and worship him. And as the brother pointed out, if we love our fellow man, we won't steal from him. We won't kill him. We won't cover this house. We, whatever our neighbors have, we will be happy for our neighbor. We won't cover uh, his spouse, uh, uh, husband or wife, because the Ten Commandment law of God is a law of love. As a matter of fact, Jesus makes it plain. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say, if you want to be saved, keep the commandments, because we can't keep the commandments good enough to be saved. So we express our love to God, and as our Savior, he saves us. Very, very good. Now, when the children of Israel left Egypt, they had been delivered out of bondage and they were on their way to the promised land, the land of Canaan. I'd like to ask the group tonight, can anyone see a parallel between the Israelites at that time and God's people of today? Can anyone see any parallel between them and us today? Anyone? Hans, go ahead, Hans. Yeah, they're they're pretty much they, they they pretty much went through the same thing we're going through. So our Canaan is the heavenly kingdom, and that's uh, the kingdom for which we strive, uh, and we we achieve that through the sanctuary. Well, the pathway to that is through the sanctuary message. Salvation through Christ, baptism, you know, daily prayer to God, you know, keeping God's commandments through his word, et cetera. And that's the same thing that the Israelites went through when they left, uh, when they left Egypt. They went through they, each of those seven furnishings in the test in, in the uh, in the uh, sanctuary. Yes. They're all symbolized in their travel from the time they left Egypt, you know, going through uh, the Red Sea. That represent that was a representation of, of, of their baptism. You know, the, the, the manna from heaven, that was their showbread. You know, the pillar of fire leading them by night, that was their, yes. that was the, the altar, the uh, altar of prayer. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, that, the, the, the seven candlesticks, sorry, the pillar of cloud leading them by day, that was the altar of incense. So they went through the same pathway trying to get to the promised land. And that's what we have to go through as well. We accept Christ, 
and we go through that same pathway through the sanctuary message with the with the hope of us making it to to the new Canaan to uh, to heaven. Very good. So, and to add uh, to yeah. that, anybody else? Someone else? Uh, we have we have a couple of more hands up. Uh, sure. Uh, okay, Doctor Doctor Pam. And yes. Art, I saw your hand up too. One of the things oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, between us is that. God said that they were to be holy like he was to be holy, which means they were to be set aside. So he set aside uh, the children of Israel to be a light unto the nation. So if we look at us today, we are to be set aside and also to be a light to other people. So that's the similarity I see. Beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Art? I am. Um... Yeah. I agree with what uh, Dr. Hahn and Dr. Pam have said already, but I look at it from a different perspective also, that just as the children of Israel mumbled, grumbled, complained, lack of faith, using a serpent and worshiping it instead of worshiping God, in today's day and time, the church as a whole, not seven day Adventists, but I'm talking about the whole church, they are doing the same thing that the children of Israel did because we as a church group globally are not worshiping God according to the way he has commanded us to do. And the children of Israel did the same thing on their way to Canaan. <clears throat> Okay, very yeah. good, very good. We have okay. everybody? Yep, I think so. All right, very good. Uh, to add to what has been said, when the children of Israel were delivered from Egyptian bondage, that kind of symbolized that when Christ comes back again, those of us who are faithful we will be delivered from the bondage of sin. And as one somebody pointed out earlier, when we are delivered from our bondage of sin, our Canaan, Canaan is going to be the heavenly Canaan land. Now, the covenant and Israel. The last question uh, on Monday's lesson was asked, what role should the law of God play in our lives today? We who have been saved by grace, and why is that law so crucial to our experience with God? Well, now to move along, because we want to cover a great deal of the lesson, I would just add to that, those of us who are saved, we obey the law because we are saved. So that is one reason why. And our goal as Christian, as one sister pointed out earlier, we are to be an example to the world. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. So the role that the law plays in our lives today for those of us who are saved we obey because we are saved not to be saved and it is crucial to our experience because we as God's people are to be an example to the world moving on now the book of the covenant the book of the covenant question is asked why is the book of Deuteronomy called the book of the covenant? And uh, those, those of you that have been studying, you know it is because the word appears so often in the book. Now, after the children of Israel had left Egypt land, they had been freed. God established his covenant with them at Sinai just before they were supposed to enter the promised land. But because of their rebellion and so forth, they didn't go immediately into the promised land. As we all know, they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years before they were able to enter into the promised land. 
Now, why did God have Moses to repeat or recite the full Ten Commandments before the people entered into the promised land? At Sinai, God himself gave the Ten Commandments to the people. They all heard him. But now they are about to enter the promised land after 40 years. And once again, in the book of Deuteronomy, God had Moses to recite all 10 of the commandments before they entered into the promised land. Why do you think God did that? I think he wanted to remind them of who they are serving because of they came out of, they came out of uh, Egypt and look what happened. So yes. in order, and plus there was another generation by the time they were going, getting ready to go in Canaan, there's a new generation. And he was looking at them, I think, to say, you know, you guys do better than your parents or your grandparents. And, you know, and remember whose, whose hands you're in, you know, who's your God. So that, that's the way I look at it. Um, we have uh, first, we have, um, I think it was uh, Audrey. Let, I'm going to let you go first, and then Dr. Pam, and then Dr. Hans. Okay, pretty much what you were saying. Um, they were very young at, uh, at the initial giving of the Ten Commandments that Moses uh, repeated that was given from the Lord to Moses to give to the children of Israel. And therefore, after 40 years, um, you tend to forget things, especially in their youth. Yes. So now these people were at least 10, so they were like 50 years old now, if they was wondering uh, for 40 years and if they were like 10 years old. So this way, make sure they understood exactly what the Ten Commandments were and that who the Lord is that has been leading them for the last 40 years, that this is his character and how important this is in their survival of daily life and their relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Audrey. Dr. Pam? Yes, like Audrey said, they... These were the young people. They were very young when the Ten Commandments were first given. Uh, so they had to be reminded of that. They also had to be reminded how their parents made mistakes mm -hmm. and that they right. did not make the same mistake that their parents made. So the Holy Deuteronomy is a very, very interesting book. Uh, because of the way it's set up and the messages that it gives is giving the whole thing all over again. So these young kids that are now grown, this generation, will remember and not make those same mistakes. Very good Amen. comments from all of you. And what you said, we find that in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 1, 2, and 3. Very, very good. Now, moving right along, we're going to go to the book uh well that's what we just finished the book of the covenant so now we are dealing with his special people his special people we are on wednesday's lesson now when we look at the time in which israelites were in the bondage and wandering around in the wilderness we find that the culture of that day and the religious practices of the people who lived in the countries around them, it was very, very bad. The people were steeped in paganism. They believed in polytheism. They had many gods. As a matter of fact, the Egyptians, they had many gods. And just to mention a few, I looked up a few and we find that, uh, the Egyptians, uh, where is it here? Yeah. Well, they had a God for vengeance. They had a God for earth. They had, uh, oh, here we are. They had one God they called Osiris. He was the king of the living. They had one God named as Horus. 
He was the God of vineyards. And they had one God they called Ra. He was the God of the sun. That was one of the supreme gods. Then they had another God called Thoth. That was the God of knowledge and wisdom. So they believed in many gods. But one of the most troubling practices that the people had in that day and time, they sacrificed their children to a God. Can you imagine how degrading and evil a religion, a religion was that would have people to offer their children as sacrifice to a God. Well, that's what happened in paganism. So when God told Abraham to offer his son, it wasn't something that was strange because other individuals did that. But in Abraham's case, because obedience was an expression of love to God, Abraham was willing to do it because he loved God. But God being a true God, as we all know, he didn't require that Abraham offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. On page 35 in our lesson for Wednesday, the question was asked, what is the idea of this day committing to God and to his covenant requirement relevant even to us this day. Why is the idea of this day committing to God and to his covenant requirement relevant even to us this day? Who would like to make a comment on that for us today? Um, brother, brother Hans, I know your hand was up. We, we didn't get a chance to holler at you uh, a second ago. So Hans, you wanna lead that off? Uh, no worries. I, I, every, everyone pretty much said what I was going to say in that when Israel got to that point, you were dealing with a whole different set of people. The, the old ones had died. Some were killed when right. they tried to revolt against Moses, etc. So God had to uh, sort of reestablish that. But just to, to, to touch base on what you were saying and to sort of answer that question, uh, God was about to have the children enter the promised land and where they were going to enter, they were going to be at a central point in the world where all, it was sort of a crossroads where all the different nations came through for, for, for trade. And God needed for every country that came across Israel, they needed, God needed those people, those strangers to see him. And it's yeah. sort of the same thing with us in today's society. Uh, we see where this world is going, where lie is now truth to a lie, up is down, left is right. It's okay to do whatever you want. God needs us to hold up that standard because people are still yearning for the truth. He wants when people cross our paths, they ought to see the Holy Spirit in us and see something different about us so that they too may decide, hey, you know, maybe I need to do something by myself or maybe that there is some good out there. Let me find out what this brother has going on. So maybe I can turn myself around and give myself a chance at salvation. All right. Very good. Um, brother, brother hold, hold on. Brother Art, he had his hand out. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Deacon Art. All right. Um, verse 16 of Deuteronomy 26 says, this day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgment. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Thou hast a vouched, and a vouch means to affirm or assert. So they ascertained and they affirmed what God had commanded them at Mount Sinai. Thou hast a vouch the Lord this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord and God has a vouch affirmed and asserted this day to thee this day to be his peculiar people as he has promised thee and that thou should keep all his commandments. They had to reaffirm the commandments that God had given them and they were reminded that they had made this promise to God and God had made a promise to them. So when they were entering to the land, that day was very important because this day, in other words, today, not yesterday, not day before, not a year ago, not five years ago, this day, today, you affirm to God and God affirms to you. Very good, All right. very good. All right. Yeah, we have two more hands. Uh, uh, Sister Betty Robinson, I think you know that name. 
uh, Pastor. Uh, yeah. Sister Robinson. Sister Robinson, you there? You got to unmute, Sister Robinson. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. It's good to see you, Pastor Smallwood. Long, long Thank time. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So nice to see all of you tonight. Um, the thought that I had is is on Wednesday's lesson is where the rubber meets the road. All of us can say how much we love the Lord. I'm good because I love him. Lord knows I love him, blah, 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 blah. But what he says is you have to show me. You have to, you have to look the way I want you to look. Yes. Walk the way I want you to walk, eat, dress, et cetera, et cetera, so that people can actually see that you belong to me. Yes. And that and that's what God wants. And I at our pastor uh, Hood made a very good comment in a sermon a while back. He said a lot of people like God. They 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 like him, but nobody wants a Lord. We don't want him to be the boss of us, but he is the boss of us. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. You know, so, I mean, trying to live this life, and I'm sure all of us on tonight and even a lot of people in the world, they really do like God. He's, he's good. He's a good God. But trying to actually do what, what, he, requ what he requires is a different story. Yes. Very good. Um, Very good. We have one more. We have one more pastor. Uh, Elder Carl Poole, I see you out there. I thought you was trying to come in. Uh, Elder Poole from Grace. Are you still there? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still here. I don't know. I'm trying to uh, figure this thing out. But uh, yeah, but everybody said kind of like what I was going to say. So there's no need to you know, uh, just to keep harping on it. Uh, yeah, because my comment was just going along the same line as everybody else's. All okay. right. All right. Well, it's good to, good to have you. Cool. Uh, it's go a ahead, sir. Go ahead. Uh, All go right. Ahead. Very, very good. Um, as was pointed out by some of the comments that we just heard, Israel, God, special of people, they had a covenant relationship with God, which meant that they were a special people. They were to witness to the world and let the people see who the true God was, and they were to be an example to the world. They were to be holy. They were to be faithful to God. They were to be a special people. Now, in a sense, uh, they were God people in that day and time. Today, God's people is represented by us, the Christian church, the people who really love God. And concerning us, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, if somebody would read that for us quickly, then I will make the comment that I would like to make. That is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9. Brother Host, if you choose somebody to read that for us, that will be just fine. 1 Not Peter problem, 2, sir. verse 9. Hey, Jan, I know you did it before you was trying to get in there. Do you want to do it this time? Sure. It's first. What was the scripture? 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter first. 2, verse number 9. God's people of today. All right. But it says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thank you very, very much. God says to us, his people today, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. Doesn't mean to be queer, but you are supposed to be different. And by your example, you are to show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness 
into his marvelous light. How do we do this? As Sister Robinson pointed out, we are to show uh, uh, the world that we are the people of God by the way we talk, by the things we do, by the way we dress. Anybody can say, oh, I love the Lord. But to walk the walk is different. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 9 through 11, Paul lists a long list of sin. And he said, such were some of you. But now that you have entered into a covenant relationship with God, you have been washed. You have been forgiven. You are a special people and you are to walk as children of light. And when we walk as children of light, we don't only talk the talk, but we will walk the walk by the things we do and by the things we say. Now, as we can bring this to a close, other images, Thursday's lesson. In the covenant, God is the lawgiver. In the covenant, we, the people, we are the recipients. Now, just looking at it as God being a lawgiver and he gives us his law, we can accept it or we can reject it. This, in a sense, seems to be a little cold, or a little farmer, as the writer of our lesson pointed out. So God, who is a God of love, he wanted to express or uh, encompass a different kind of relationship with himself and his people. So we find other images that God used to portray the idea of a covenant with him and his people, but he wanted to do it in a different setting or with different with different images. So in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5, chapter 14, verse 1, chapter 32 and verse 6, and verse uh, 18 through 20, we find a beautiful image that God wants us to have when it comes to our covenant relationship with him. And I wonder who would like to give us that special image that God gave us in these texts that I just mentioned. What is the image? Who would like to share it with us tonight? We're dealing with the covenant relationship, but we want it to be in a, a more uh, encompassing way than just the covenant with, the, with law and obedience. Anybody picked it up and want to share it with us? Mr. Robinson's hand is up and then Dr. Elgema. Oh, I'm All sorry. Right. Uh, go ahead, uh, Sister Robinson. Well, in Deuteronomy 8, 5, he says, God chose us uh, and that he is a loving father. And, th and that's the image that he wants. Yes, we are in an agreement, in yeah. a covenant, but it's not, it is not cold and formal. Right. In, in, in our relationship with God, he's constantly showing his love for us. And, yeah. and, I like the, and I like the way Moses put it back in uh, Deuteronomy earlier in our lesson. He called, you know, a stiff-necked people. And I'm saying us because we're modern Israel. We're the same. Yes. And he says, you were, you were evildoers and, and, and bad since the day I, I knew you. <laughs> He's, you. You've never been good. Uh, and that's mm. the way it is for us today. But God loves us anyway. And yes. that's the difference, right. the, the covenant that he has, that, that we're in. He loves us in spite of who we are, what we do. He's so forgiving. You know, yes. that, that's what he wants us to understand. Very good. Very good. Any, anyone else? 
Yes, and uh, Deuteronomy, uh, God continues to say, I am your God, you are my people. So throughout this whole book, he's trying to show us it's a personal relationship. He is our God, our personal God. We are his people. We are his sons. We are his daughters throughout this entire book. And I think in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, he continues to say that he is our God more than any time in any of the other books and that you are my people. We are the people of God. Very good, Amen. very good. Uh, we have everybody? Yeah, we have one more. Yes, sir. We have Art, Deacon Art. All right. I agree with what everybody said. And in Deuteronomy 32, the Lord in verse 6 says, Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath brought thee? Has he not made thee and established thee? And requite means is this how you repay me? So they must have done something wrong. They must have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. And further on down in verses 18 to 18 through 20, it lets us know God reminded them he was their creator or is their creator. And right. he is the one who has begotten them. And he says, and now you have forgotten me. And then he goes on to say these words. He says that he abhor them. And abhor means to regard with disgust and hatred. And then he says he hides his face from them. Mm. The mm. children of Israel turn away from God and God, can, if I can use the term, got sick and tired of them doing that. And he was yeah. going to punish them. And then to establish that in today, the same thing in today's church world. God is tired of us, his people. And he is going to show everybody, those whom he abhor and those whom he loves and trusts. Okay. Amen. Right. Very, very good. Okay. All of those comments were very, very good. And as we hey, wrap Pastor. it up, yes. Yes, I, I hate to interrupt you, but what we haven't done, um, if anyone is on the phones, uh, Sister Puella, I know you've been on the phone, uh, but if it's any of our other uh, friends who are on the uh, phones, if you'd like to make your comment, this is a great time to do it now. Um, uh, this is open to our folks who are on the phones. Uh, you hit star, I believe it's star six if you want to unmute. And uh, if you have some words to say, we'd love to hear from you. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Pastor, go right ahead. Okay. As we were about to say, we have a covenant relationship with God as his people. But he wants us, as was stated by some of you, he wants us to understand that he is a loving heavenly father. You know, there once was a time when I didn't understand uh, how loving God was. And based on the way the preachers preached, they gave me the idea that God was a big God looking down with big eyes, just waiting for us to do something wrong. But that is not the God that we serve. The God that we serve is a loving God, like a loving father. And this is the relationship he wants us to understand. He wants us to see him as a father and a real father. An ideal father is one who loves and cares for his family. As pointed out in our lesson, the family is the closest, the tightest, and the most loving of all bonds on earth. That is the idea of family. And this is the concept that God wants us to have about him, a loving father who cares for us. And this is why the Bible says, in our time of need, we don't have to be shy. We don't have to hesitate. 
but we can come boldly to him, our loving father, because he isn't waiting to crush us or condemn us, but he is just waiting for us to confess our sin so he can forgive us. And the Bible says that we confess our sins. He is faithful. He is just. He will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this is what God wants us to understand in this covenant relationship. Because we love him, we will obey him. And if by chance we stumble and fall, we don't have to think that God is upset or mad with us. We can jump up and run boldly to the throne of God. And he is just waiting to give us grace and forgiveness. This concludes the thought that I had for us tonight as we discuss the everlasting covenant. And I enjoy hearing so many familiar voices and seeing some familiar faces. And may God bless each and every one of you as we continue to be faithful and as we let our light shine everywhere we go as we prepare for and wait on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you very much and good night to all of you. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Wonderful. Small word. It was so great to see you. And you Amen. did a wonderful, you did the lesson wonderful. Thank you so Thank much. You. This is Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Man, this has Amen. been great. Uh, not only that, I, I, I commented to someone, this is old school teaching. You, you, you paced it, you knew exactly yes. where you were going yes. and, and you did an awesome yes. job, sir. You did an awesome job. We're so thankful to have you tonight and we're gonna get you back soon. Don't think you're gonna get away. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll fly you back in from Atlanta. <laughs> you know, we'll pay whatever we gotta pay to get you in. <laughs> anytime, anytime. All right, all right. Well, Man. it's before we close out, and I know some of you who, uh, was under the tutelage of Elder Smallwood uh, as he when he first came to Southeast. If you have any questions or comments at this time, this would be a great time. We still got a few extra minutes uh, because of his timing. If anyone wants to say anything or someone wants to just ask a question of, about his ministry, uh, feel free. This is a time to talk. Don't be shy, Southeast. This is this is one of our own. <laughs> Uh, Gladys, I see your hand up. <laughs> Hi, Pastor Smallwood. It's been a wonderful time, chance to hear you again. Uh, you Thank sound you. good. You sound the same. And uh, I really enjoyed the lesson. I really, I really did. Thank uh, we you. you. We love you. And I remember you very well under the tent. You baptized me and my yes. family. And oh, you're I still did. looking good. All of <laughs> Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was good yes. to see you. We're keeping Faces you in our prayers. Thank you. you in our prayers. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Continue Amen. to do so. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Glad. Um, anybody else? Um, Sister Fluellen. Oh, Pastor Smallwood, it's so good to hear you again. Thank I remember you. the tent. Yeah. I remember the tent. You baptized my daughter, Holly. And yes. uh, there were quite a few children that were baptized. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Sister Mayhorn's son, I remember you baptized yes. him, of course. He was a product of our vacation Bible school. Remember yes. we would run two whole weeks, not, you know, just one week. It was always two weeks. Yes. And then those days were kind of different. But we will never forget you, Pastor Smallwood. And it also Thank meant, you. instead of driving across town to Glenville, Oh my goodness, I could just go down the street. I live down the street. That's right. You, 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 you still live yeah. down the street? Oh no, we uh, we have moved away because the homes uh, for my family at that time, they were a little small. And right. so, you know, having a son and a daughter, uh, you know, and you came to visit my husband and he was not an Adventist, but he said he liked you because yes. you were from Georgia and that, and that's his state as well. But Okay, well, well, very good. Fun, fun memories Pastor, in my life. Pastor Smallwood, I just want to say right. one more thing. I remember yeah. you having that swimming pool in your backyard, and yes. I came oh, over Pastor. and was swimming, and I was drowning, and you said, and you saved me. I, I'll never forget <laughs> that. 
<laughs> to God you. be the glory. To God be the glory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's something I won't forget. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, we have some folks on, on the phone lines. Again, this is a great time. If you have a question or a comment to say, um, please take, you know, we're going to take a couple of minutes. And if you like to, if you like to uh, say anything, uh, the folks, Sister Battle, are you on, on the line tonight? Pastor, you remember Sister Elva Battle, correct? Oh, yes. She was one of our yeah. great Sabbath school leaders in the church. And I understand yes, she yes. is still carrying on in that area. She's still carrying on. She's helped. She's one of my helpers, and she has Wonderful. really done a great job. Yeah, she's done a great job. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, all right. I think we're going to, uh, at this time, we're going to uh, call it a night. <clears throat> and uh, again, I want to thank uh, Pastor Smallwood for coming out and, and taking time out of his busy schedule. Uh, to come out and teach us uh, Sabbath school tonight. It's good to have one of our own originals in the house of God to uh, come out and, and, and teach us. And I know, again, uh, it brings some great memories back, especially you, Sister Whitlock, because he saved your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> All yeah, right. That's that right. All right. So we're... Pastor Smallwood, I just want to tell you, <laughs> One other thing, which I didn't know, because you came back to Cleveland to do my husband's funeral before he died, he did become an Adventist. Okay, and I think it's probably your kindness, because I didn't know until you mentioned that you had been to my house and been out in the garage where he was working on the cars. Oh, when you oh, said that during yes. the funeral, I said, "Oh, he's yes. been to my house," but anyway, he did accept this message. It was oh. probably because you went out of your way to be so kind. Thank you. Glad to hear yeah. that. That thrills my heart. Sister uh, pa uh, Elder, uh, Elder Pamela. Elder Pamela. Yes. Go ahead. I just want to remind everyone that tomorrow we're going to be doing a program, a short program immediately after church for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's a short program. We're going to have a testimony by Dr. Myra King about her wonderful story of not just surviving, but thriving through a breast cancer diagnosis. And we'll be signing up women to have mammograms done on uh, November the 6th, they will be done. We'll, we'll start signing people up to get mammograms done. Amen, amen. Well, I'm going to uh, ask. I'd like uh, to say something uh, to Pastor Smallwood. Hello. Yes, yes, go right ahead. Yes, it's right. Go ahead. Uh, Pastor Smallwood, this is uh, Blanche Mayhorn. I'm the mother of Bernard oh. Penn. Yes, okay. You see what you see what you did 46 years ago when you baptized him and he was 11 years old? Yes. And now he's a pastor. <laughs> yes, he's down here in the conference with myself. I saw him. He's a good-looking young man, a great preacher, and a great singer. To God be the glory. Oh, yes. So, God bless you. Thank you all very, right. very, very much. So nice we to hear your thank, voice. We all think about you all the time. Well, keep praying for me. Amen. 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 Hey, hey, Art. Um, would you mind giving us closing a closing prayer? Uh, no problem. Oh, oh, hold up, Mark. Okay. Up. Just for a second. Just want to recognize Pastor Hood is on. I wasn't sure if he was coming on tonight. Uh, Pastor, before Art gives a closing prayer, do you, you have a couple of words you wanted to say? Oh, no. Just uh, welcome back to Pastor Smallwood. Thank you for obliging us. You see, a lot of people are, are excited about uh, your ministry, and they have not forgotten you. I know it's got to feel great, yes. uh, but we're looking forward to worshiping tomorrow, and I will be in touch with you because we, Thank you. Uh, if if the um, if the if everything goes well and we can come out the house next year, we're having homecoming, so oh, we'd great. love to have you back. We happy to go. Amen. 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 
Amen. Amen. And yeah, before we get out of here, uh, remember we, we have the blood drive going and uh, we hope that if you can sign up, uh, see Sister Veronica at church tomorrow or one of her staff, if you'd like to sign up. And again, keep Sister Cecily and others uh, in your prayers uh, as you, uh, when you can encourage someone, give them a call just to let them know that you love them. And then also, we also have on tonight, uh, my friend, uh, Elder Carl Poole from Grace Community. He's going to be on next week. He's our next week's uh, teacher. And um, uh, Carl, if you, if you got a couple of things, uh, maybe you wanna say a word before we get out of here. <laughs> no, you know, just I just enjoyed for these past couple of weeks. You know, I've enjoyed the lesson study uh, with the Southeast Church, and I'm looking forward to next week. And uh, I, even now, I solicit all your comments and your prayers for next uh, Sabbath. So, looking forward to it. Thank you, Barry. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. And he will be doing the love of the Lord and your God. So we're looking forward to him coming uh, coming on with us. And again, from Grace Community, uh, we're looking forward uh, of our, my good friend, uh, Elder Carl Poole for coming on. And then now I have a, a new good friend and that's Elder Smallwood, man. I'm just so happy to have you. And we just uh, so glad that you came out. So at this time, we're gonna ask uh, uh, Deacon, uh, Deacon uh, Art, he's our head deacon. Would you give us our closing prayer? <clears throat> Excuse me, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the lesson we have been in on tonight. We thank you for every comment, Lord. We thank you for Pastor Smallwood coming on, oh God, and instructing us in his lesson. Thank you, God, for how you have brought back together many people with many memories, oh God, for Pastor yes. Smallwood. God, continue to touch our hearts and our minds, oh Lord. Let us take this word in that was shared with all of us on tonight, oh God, and let us put it to practice, oh God, to show the love and the mercy and the grace that you have bestowed upon us. As you have done unto us, oh God, let us do unto others, God, in the name of Jesus. The Sabbath school lessons come forth, God, to help to make us strong, build our strength up in you, God, because it's not by might, nor is it by power, but it's by your spirit. Bless Elder Brooks, oh God, as he continues to lead us in the Sabbath school, oh Lord, bless everyone on the line, God. You see every need in our lives on everyone's life, oh God. And God, thank you for another Sabbath day. You have blessed us to enter into, oh God, and help us, oh Lord, to rise in the morning with a mind stayed on thee and ready to come worship together in spirit and in truth. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, we do ask and pray. Amen and amen. 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 All right, good night, everyone. And again, just like we always say, when you miss Southeast Sabbath School, you've missed a lot. We thank Amen. you all for coming out. It's been proven every week. God is so good. We have a great Sabbath School. We're looking forward to Elder Carl Poole next week. We'll see you then. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you tomorrow for all those who can come out to church. We see you tomorrow at Southeast. And then if not, we'll see you online. We love you. Take care. Have a great Amen. night. Get some rest. Good night, bro, Barry.